Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the June meeting of the Library Marketing Book Club. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Really glad you could make it here. Uh, this month, we read The Secret Lives of Customers by David Duncan. A um, little different uh, book. Well, I mean, there are other nonfiction books like this. There's certainly the uh, Patrick Lencioni books, if anybody's familiar with them. Oh, and uh, just one more reminder, if you are able to turn on your camera, we'd love to see your happy faces. If you are not able to turn on your camera, we get it. But uh, but if you can, that'd be great. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're familiar with the Patrick Lencioni books that are like the business books that are um, like Five Dysfunctions of a Team, I remember that, that title, uh, a couple others. Um, where they kind of do a narrative, but I, you know, this one used that same narrative style to go through the examples uh, for the for the majority of the book. They, they he talks about it in terms of part one and part two, but part two is really um, a brief <laughs> recap of what's going on in the book. But uh, but yeah, so let's just start with um, anybody has any. Uh, what are your initial thoughts, or what did you think of the book? Erica, we can talk about that in a moment. Anybody did did both get to read the book? I don't know if anybody got to read the book. Sometimes that happens, but <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I hate the silence. Um, <laughs> so I didn't read the book. Um, honestly, I've been kind of busy lately, and so I'm just happy to finally get back to coming to book club. And I yeah. thought it was and see everybody. My camera's not working, so sorry. That's all right. Um, That's all right. No problem. Well, thanks, Brianna. But yeah, okay, no problem. Fair to admit, I haven't read the book. No problem. I can talk about a few things from the book for folks if you didn't have a chance to read it, and it's okay. Um, yeah, Erica, you talk all the time. <laughs> uh, it's good. Uh, no, it's we're doing well. So. Um, you know, so the book was, um, yeah, it was uh, very helpful to think about customers and patrons. Yeah, it, it um, is an interesting approach. So the way that the author goes through, and it'll be familiar if you, if you have, um, you know, either with us or, or elsewhere read, um, you know, books like, uh, building a story brand. There's a lot of things that are very similar. And there's a lot of marketing books that talk about things in this way. It's a very, uh, you know, it's a good contemporary way of, of uh, marketing happening. Um, so just to recap, what the author does is he goes through the story of this fictional coffee shop or coffee chain uh, called Taza. Um, and uh, the problem that the, that Taz is having is that some of their most loyal customers are leaving. So probably a familiar situation to many of, to what many of us all experience, um, where uh, customers leave, especially your loyal customers leave, and you don't really know why. Um, so what he does is he goes through, uh, through by taking through a story, um, goes through to investigate why are these customers leaving? And it's not like a mass exodus, but it's just some very noticeable changes. So uh, it's, you know, it's really, it's really interesting. If you haven't had a chance to read it yet, I do recommend that you take a look at it. Um, you, um, uh, he goes through and, and uh, talks with somebody who works for the, works for the company, the Taza company. And uh, somebody who's really looking at kind of the big data side and but the change that he makes is he says no let's go look at small data so the majority of the investigation is done by interviewing and it's not interviewing staff it's not interviewing um you know it's not interviewing anybody in particular it's goes through and interviews people that are uh doing different things 
at the library or at the library, at the coffee shop. And he takes the approach of this idea of like jobs. What jobs are you hiring the coffee shop for? Um, and we can talk a little bit more about that. And that's what he's trying to find out from people is what is it that the coffee shop is doing for you? So it's similar to story brand and that story brand kind of, um, and you know, other things like that where you're looking at what problem is the customer trying to solve. And it's a very um, interesting customer focused way to look at marketing, which as we know is, is uh, you know, a, a way that not every company does that, but um, oh, I love the Ptolemy metaphor. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, you know, you look at, you look at how, um, you, know, you look at the kind of things that your customers are looking for to get out of your organization rather than trying to promote your products and services as, hey, you know, we spent time creating these and these are really great. So you should be using them because we took our time and, and created them. So it's, you know, it's a very, they call it a job focused verse, uh, version rather than a um, product centric version. So uh, yeah, so um, yeah. And there is one, uh, yeah, there's this really great thing. Erica pointed out the Ptolemy metaphor, um, that it's easy to be very self or product centered and think everything revolves around us when we know everything should revolve around patrons or customers. And, and the example is that, um, Ptolemy thought that the, um, uh, that everything revolved around the earth and um, so there were a lot of scientists that would work to just prove that that theory that, um, you know, why just find different ways to observe things all in the service of proving that the um, that everything revolved around the earth rather than looking at the facts and seeing that, oh, you know, actually this really um, this really doesn't just justify our current view, but it justifies a different view that we should be looking at. So it's pretty interesting, I thought. Um, so to that end, uh, even if you hadn't read the book, um, what do you all think about, uh, you know, how is your library doing and what kind of things have you done or would you like to do or um, have you tried doing? as far as, has anybody gone and um, just interviewed customers? Anybody thought about doing that or tried doing that? Or what, what's been your experience as somebody in the marketing side talking just to customers? Yeah. When I started reading the book earlier in the month, um, it inspired me to just post something asking people Oh. So I just made a post that said, why do you use the library? Um, oh. And it only got 10 comments, but it was kind of helpful because, again, this was like right when I started the book. So it's sort of those beginning yeah. stages of them interviewing the customers. So I thought I would just see what responses I get. And so it was interesting. how did it go? What, what did you what did you learn, Kelly? Was there anything kind of interesting that you saw in the results? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be helpful to like start that list of jobs that people hire our library for. Um, I think it'd probably be good for me to also just go out and interview, especially people that come in a lot of the days. Um, yeah. Some of the answers were mainly to check out books, mm -hmm. um, yeah. to work in a low pressure inspirational place, <laughs> um, helpful staff. So a good yeah. start for sure of what people are even using it for to make sure we're doing those things well. That is really cool, Kelly. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they, it is interesting always to see, you know, that, yeah, that people still check out books, that books are still a big thing, yeah. and we, you know, <laughs> even though again, which we spend a lot of time promoting programs, which uh, programs are not bad, but um, how much time are we spending promoting programs and talking about programs when in fact, you know, kind of the lead in might be books. Um, yeah. And working in a low pressure inspirational place. So there's a lot in the book about that, about the environment that people are doing things. I mean, it is a coffee shop, but um, you know, it, it it's kind of interesting that, uh, that they talk about that. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's pretty cool. They they talk about uh, that. They talk about also <laughs> like uh, some of the uh, some of the things people don't like about some of the places that they do work. Um, is that it's more like a pickup joint, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> they talk about, you know, they talk about people not wanting to go, be in, in that kind of environment. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And there's a bunch of great stuff over here. So I'm going to read this in some of the comments. Yeah, it is interesting, um, Erica, that he has a PhD in physics. Uh, physics is a, <laughs> is a nice um, uh, way to look at data and look at uh, behaviors and kind of see um, how people are doing things. So that was pretty cool. And Kirsten, it's been hard. Um, you're in the admin office, so you're a few. Oh, so your office is actually away from the branch. That's interesting. Um, does everybody else, uh, do others have that where your office is not at a library location? I, I This is my worst I've ever been in, so... I see a couple typing, um, but yeah, so your admin building does have genealogy. So um, yeah, so that can be tough. Um, you know, and in this book, they do talk about actually going to the places and sitting down and, and doing the interviews. So, you know, Kirsten, maybe it's something you want to try, you know, go to a branch and, and uh, talk to some customers It you know, it, it might feel a little weird, but uh uh, it's just a really interesting idea to go and just ask some questions. And there's a great thing in the book where he, um, for those who hadn't read it, where he really outlines the types of, um, he outlines the questions that you should ask and more like the topics that you should discuss. So, you know, he talks about, you know, don't actually ask these questions, but ask questions that get at these kind of thing, which are things like, what do you hire the library for? And um, so it's, it's a really valuable way to do that. And Erica, when you worked in a library, you go out on the floor. Yeah, I love a chance to go out on the floor. It's really cool. And I work in our main library here. So it's really neat to go out and see and quick interviews to help with service enhancements. Yeah, after the pandemic. Um, yeah, this book was, I think, came out like right maybe a year or a year and a half ago. So I think it was probably written before um, pandemic. So um, uh, yeah, seeing people return to the libraries, um, it, it is nice to see it. I've had the opportunity to, uh, what, what I think uh, might be a good way to do this, and I might try to do it a little more, is to go to things like children's programs and library programs, because people seem to be pretty open to talk, especially children's programs. We had uh, we have a brand new children's area and um, in a couple of our libraries, and I was there. And yeah, there's a lot of people who come in and they see the thing for the first time and they really want to talk about like what they use the library for and what they're looking for. Um, uh, Andrea, currently in the process of identifying different audiences. Um, your goal is to eventually do interviews. That's great. Um, focused on web usability. Yeah, web usability, something certainly that you could talk to people about. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to know what, how are people using your website? Because that is another big job that a lot of people use the library for. And yeah, low pressure, inspirational place. Yeah, I, I agree, Erica. That is a really nice way to put things in. Kirsten, you go into, yeah, you go into branch just to say hello. And Erica, always good advice to have people in each interview. Yeah, and it was it was very neat. They have people that are in, you know, different situations. So they go to like some young people, they go to some, you know, someone studying, they go to someone, uh, a group of older men that are playing games, a couple of women that are just kind of um, post-workout. Uh, and one of the business people, because there's a lot of talk about, oh, the business people are taking over these cafes. Um, and uh, it was interesting. They learned, you know, they learned a lot of stuff. So it was a really cool, really cool thing. Um, an emerging adults program. Hmm. So Kirsten's talking about we're about to launch an emerging adults program at our main branch. Talk to daughter's daycare to see what a sort of programs would make them want to come. Oh, so that's what it is. Okay, I see. So emerging adults is for people that are 18 to 30 years old. So yeah, like that college, post-college group. Um, what are the topics that, that they're going to cover in those, Kirsten? Wow. 
waiting to see if you're typing. Stitch social program. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, budgeting. Oh, crocheting. Oh, so actually stitching. <laughs> crocheting, knitting, and embroidery. <laughs> very popular these days. Um, so yeah, that's very cool. That's good. Yeah, budgeting, Tara, would be good. Financial literacy would definitely be a good one. Um, so uh yeah so what other anybody else have any other thoughts about um the yeah uh, other ideas does anybody have any other ideas oh i see a longer one here oh erica cordelia is going to speaking at bibliocon yeah so i just um we will do bibliocon this year which is i work at bibliocon it's just so you Biblio, know, but yeah. also a public librarian but um we i was really interested in marketing and you know it's it's interesting because we're technically like a B to B to C company, right? Because we're here to find out what your patrons want too. Like that's our goal too. So I think there's a lot of um, similarity there. But Cordelia and I were talking, and I think this is what she's going to speak on. Uh, okay. BiblioCon will be free, so I just wanted to sell oh, share that with you guys. It'll be free online, and the way that we're doing it when it's online like this instead of in person is mm -hmm. to do at least one full day of content that would be helpful to anybody because it's more important to like. You know, we want to make the public library experience great for all public libraries, regardless whether yeah. they use our software. So anyway, I'm super excited. Cordelia is obviously amazing. She's actually why I found out about this group. I think oh, you great. referenced her one time and like I've worked with her for many years and like we've been around for a long time. So yeah. um, anyway, she always has such fantastic insights and really brings together that marketing side. But I think that idea of like figuring out, you know, what do patrons want and then planning around that, as opposed to like, here's a program, you guys go market it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we talked in this group before that, yeah, that's often what it feels like. It feels like, okay, we came up with this thing. Now you all go promote it. <laughs> like, well, could we have talked with you about it a little bit so we could, you know, and maybe could we, you know, or, you know, but at least, or at least, can you tell us what the genesis of this program was and what people, you know, because sometimes it is, I mean, sometimes certainly there are, they come from patron um, needs and behaviors and, and, and hopefully what jobs they hire the library for, but, uh, but yeah, oh, that's very cool. That'll be good. Um, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, Cordelia, um yes she presented we we covered her book uh a little while back and uh, if anybody missed that you can check that out those all the videos are archived but yeah um yeah that's what they're that's what they're talking about here so um and the other yeah so some of the other things they talk about in this book uh that would be interesting to hear anybody's thoughts are um Oh, I just lost it. Um, oh, so they talk about that they created this this uh, big loyalty program um, for people that were most likely to be uh, drinking the most coffee in these coffee shops. And then it turns out that many of those people, according to the data, um, are actually not the drinking coffee. They're using the they're using the coffee shop for lots of other things. So, you know, it's another great example of um, when people are trying to, um, you know, guess what people might be doing and coming up with things that, uh, you know, maybe you assume that might make sense for people, but without actually talking to people and finding out what they're using something for, then you know, it's kind of kind of not so great. So um, turns out not really being something very valuable to the more valuable customers um, in the in the in the shop. So, yeah. Anybody else have any other thoughts on the book? Um, you know, uh, for those that had a chance to read it, was it something that was, um, you know, worthwhile? Glad you read it, um, or you know, something that uh, that maybe uh, didn't have a ton of new information. Just be curious to hear. I thought it was good. I liked that it was kind of the story 
format at the beginning it was kind of corny and I feel like they could have cut a lot of that out but at the same time it did like help me get through it faster like I feel like I read the part two with the actual meat and potatoes a lot slower yeah. so it was kind of a good way to get like a nonfiction book information into my head so I appreciated that yeah yeah Kelly yeah it was it was a little different idea than usual um and yeah, I agree. I mean, there are definitely some corny parts. It was funny with uh, uh, there was some. So I listened to the book, and it was just funny. They always hit me funny when uh, there's like two or three times where the uh, the younger woman that he's working with um, mentions Mark. He's my fiance. Mark. He's my fiance. <laughs> it's like yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a neat format. I you know not very often, which was something that that made it kind of an interesting book to pick. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, I thought that was a neat format. And yeah, um, anything else? Any other thoughts about the about the book? Um, I thought that the title was very intriguing, which is why I read this one. Like sometimes when you posted titles, I've already read them or or yeah. whatever, I just can't come. I'm always really interested to hear what um, public library marketing people are saying right now. I yeah. love the title of it and I wanted it to get more into these secret lives of customers yeah. because I think that one thing that I've really struggled with as a librarian and in my current place of work too, is trying to figure out how like the different paths that customers use or patrons use. And we know like, for example, an online patron behaves very differently than a patron who walks into the building. But mm -hmm. it's those people walking yep. into the building that, you know, it's easier to get quick interviews from. And also I think staff's perceptions are based on those folks many times. Yeah. So um, I was just interested in more secrets and yeah. more love. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I, I could I see what you're saying. And I thought so too. I thought it was gonna be, yeah, I thought it was gonna be a little more in-depth um studies of some of the some of the people's lives. It was, yeah, it, it yeah, it was interesting. It it didn't, yeah, maybe it didn't exactly follow up with that title, but um because yeah, it does have it's kind of more of these cursory interviews with people. Um so yeah, it didn't look into the, I was thinking that they might have gone just a little bit more data into it instead of kind of completely, uh, you know, getting away from the data though. I mean, they talked about it in a few parts, but, uh, but yeah, but it was, yeah, it was interesting. It was definitely intriguing, had a great title. <laughs> if you want to sell books, that's a good way to sell books. Um, Andrea, you've been looking at Google analytics. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything. Yeah. So Google analytics, does everybody use Google analytics to look at uh, their stuff and see um, Google analytics is actually changing from uh, their past well, or current, I guess, version of analytics to a new one. And the new one has some pretty interesting um, insights that are a little different. Um, uh, Andrea. Yeah. If you have anything else to share, like of some, you know, anything you found or, you know, the other thing too is not just Google Analytics, but Google Trends is something that I'd like to get into a little more and uh, see what kind of trends are out there um, to uh, to see. But yeah, there is definitely something still valuable in big data, and I think that is part of the author's message that it's not totally you know it's not he's not saying that the big data is useless. I mean that's what I got from it, but he's saying that there is definitely uh, this qualitative step where you can learn a lot more from it. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. Well, if anybody has anything else about the book, that's great. If anybody has any other things to talk about um, from a, a library marketing or a marketing perspective, any questions, any problems, any uh, obstacles people are facing that you want to see if others have faced the same, um, any pro uh, projects to share, what's going on? Oh, very nice, Kirsten. So a new website and a storybook trail. Um, wow. So both. Um, 
So what's the storybook trail? Is it, uh, so is it like a, do you following sort of the story walk layout? Is it a story walk? A lot of text talk today. So all the more important for people to get the chat transcripts. Well, let's see if we get, oh, our historical society built frames for pages. Oh, summer reading. Um, Oh, Imagination Library, very cool. Um, so thanks, yeah. Um, others, do others have story walks? Do others, we've talked about this sometimes before, do others have story, anybody else have story walks for the libraries? Um, that's pretty cool. We have one uh, at, a, at a park down near downtown. And uh, right now <laughs> we are, <laughs> We are working on getting a new laminator so we can make more pages so we can get these things, um, get the thing worked out. And something would be interesting is if, does so does anybody else, I, anybody else have a story walk? Other organizations asking for them. Yeah, two more planned, that's great. That's really excellent. Um, so you've seen, oh, more and more being promoted on LinkedIn. Do you mean, Tara, do you mean story walks or you just mean libraries or things in general? Yeah, more libraries sharing that they have story walks, which is oh. kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, if uh, something that I've, uh, uh, if anybody has ideas on this, so uh, we have a story walk and something that we're trying to figure out is what should be, you know, should we have a reward at the end of the story walk? Um, thanks, Andrea. Um, should we have some kind of reward? So we started, when we started the story walk, we started with, you know, okay, when you finish this one, you can go to a library and you can pick up a copy of the book. So you have a copy of this same book to like take home, which seems okay. Um, Oh, Emmy, that's cool. Um, so, which seems all right, but then again, it hasn't been, it hasn't really attracted a lot of people to do it. Um, so just curious what ways to tie, oh, next one in the series. That's a great idea, Tara. Um, yes, what job is the patron hiring the library to do? So I, I actually did one of those. Great question, Erica. Um, so yeah, so here's what I came up with. Um, let me see. So I'm just using this my, as my group for, for marketing help. <laughs> so thanks everybody for indulging. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you find this group useful. Um, I, I know I do, but I, I worry sometimes that it's because I uh, tend to uh, kind of pose a lot of questions. Um, and if you have any other suggestions about any other ways to, uh, to uh, approach this, please let me know. But um, I am a big fan of story brand, as you may realize in some of the things that I've talked about. Um, so I'm gonna share this. And if you haven't read How to Build a Story Brand, strongly recommend it. Um, great book by Don Miller. Um, and the, um, the premise is that, uh, you know, so sorry if, if uh, for those of you have heard it, but uh, the premise is that it, you have a character, the character has a problem, they meet a guide, um, guide gives them a plan, calls them to action that ends in success, helps them avoid failure. And during that, there is a character transformation. This is a free website where you can create your own brand scripts on mystorybrand.com. Um, so I started looking at doing one for story walk and, and so this character part and the problem part, this is where I think the jobs kind of come into play. Um, 
eh, maybe all throughout this. Um, and remembering that the character is your customer and the character is the hero. You're not the hero, you are the guide. So, um, you know, so in terms of what is the story block, <laughs> thanks Tara, um, what does the, uh, you know, what does the story walk do? What are people doing? So I said a fun outdoor literacy activity. Uh, you know, you probably even just take out, out take out literacy, um, but you know, since it's a library, um, that they can do with their kids safely on their own schedule. So that's something that people, you know, if people want to do something, um, some sort of a literacy activity, then they can do this um, on their own schedule in a place where, uh, you know, where they can be out in a park, but in a nice kind of a nice environment and do that. Um, the problem is uh, time, COVID, um, and the one that I'm kind of really settling on is screens. So thinking that, you know, the, the villain of doing something like a story walk is that we're all tied to our screens. Um, and uh, what's the external problem? Kids don't think reading is fun. The internal problem, I'm not really done with that one. I'm just thinking about people or um, thinking about their own enjoyment of reading and that's what they're trying to share. And then a philosophical question is reading should be fun and free um, then move on to an empathy statement. So again, kind of playing on this job, we know that too many screens take over our lives and spread our families apart. So, and I kind of keep on moving down there, but yeah, so that, so thinking about that uh, again, what, so in, in that context, what is it that, um, that people uh, that might, I'm gonna I'll take my notes and move them over here. Um, what is it that, is there anybody have any suggestions as to, you know, what is it that is going to be some, you know, how do we con communicate that to people or how do we let people know that we understand that and what kind of things, oh yeah, engaged on a hike. Oh, almost done yet. Great, Kirsten, yes, that's a great idea. I love that. Um, um, yeah, oh, I love that. Um, you know, are there incentives? Are there things like, how do we, so the, I guess two questions, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. One is how do we connect story walk to the library like how do we how does it is there a way for us to connect it to the library and does it help us or you know or should we be connecting that to the library or should it kind of just be its own experience and that's good enough and you know what are we leaving people with so that they maybe think about either coming back to and to you know the exhibit when it's updated or you know, or how do we get them into the library or not into the library? I mean, even using the library online or something. So um, yeah, attracting non-library users, Tara, that definitely is, a, is a, an opportunity. And that's one of these where, yeah, you don't have to go to a library and just because you're not in a library doesn't mean you can have that experience. So yeah, I really like that. Any other thoughts that you have about um, connecting an outdoor away from a library experience with, with the library, whether it's, you know, some type of an incentive or something else. Partnerships with local parks. Yes, I thought about that too, Kirsten, that is great. Yeah, so cr creating uh, partnerships with local parks. So how do we create those with local parks? How can we help you? How can we help them? Um, yeah, and is that, um, what the parks want is more people using the parks, which I think sounds like that's what it should be. Um, so yeah, and what kind of things can they do? Um, Erica, you asked, do most story walks have QR codes or something like that to connect to other story walks or other similar community or library experiences? Um, we did, we did put in a QR code, hasn't gotten a lot of use. Um, to be fair, we haven't changed the story for a while, and I don't think we've been changing it. We've had an opportunity to change it too much um, during. So we probably haven't given it enough time yet. Um, but oh, I love, but that's something I didn't see in your question there is connect to other story walks or other similar community or library experiences. That's really smart. I like that. 
because yeah, we're, it's not always all about, um, all about just, uh, you know, promoting, Hey, you've done this thing outside now come inside to a building and, you know, and check out a book, but you know, Hey, here's how can we like talking about, uh, if you remember Jay Bear's book, Utility, um, talking about how can we be useful to people? And again, respecting what they're looking for this experience and saying, that's great. Oh, that's really good. I wonder if yeah. there's a way too to like engage the kids, you know, so it's their thing as opposed to the parent. Mm. Like, so if the kid, not, again, this doesn't really go with the idea of getting kids off screens because it's basically mm -hmm. like screen yeah. out. Like, <laughs> like with but I'm wondering like, maybe it could be like vote on your next story walk. Like here's the story walks yeah. we're considering. You vote, and we'll do the next one. Just something yeah. where it gives the kids like more ownership over like what's oh. next. Um, I think the take and make at the end could be really cute too. Yeah, take and make would be really neat. Um, be a little concerned about <laughs> taking them all, but uh, but maybe they there's some library to get them. They they could yeah. be like if you're really yeah. into this topic, like here's a here's deeper dives based on whatever yeah. the topic of the story. I know my That's local right. library just did a story. They change their story walks all the time. They just did one on Juneteenth and you can oh, yeah. and get more information. So yeah. Um, Emmy, you said uh, that you do two to three story walks a year. So I don't know if you're able to get on mic, um, but it'd be interesting to hear if those are, um, you know, are those, um, so I'm guessing those are like temporary exhibits then like, and I'd just be curious to hear a little bit more. And then I want to get into Brianna. Sure. Hi, this is, I just actually joined this group, I think 10 days ago. So Yay. I was being very quiet. I did actually read the book um, in Great. those few days, but hello. Um, hey. So yes, I, we, the library that I was previously at and the one that I'm at now um, aimed for anywhere between two and four a year. And okay. they were a temporary. So we replaced the stories and we partnered with different parks through, we partner with different parks through our park district. Um, so for us, it's a partnership um, and it allows us to keep them up. We typically keep them up for anywhere from two to four weeks in each park. Okay, okay. Um, so, and that has worked pretty well. We have done coloring sheets at the end in like the real mm -hmm. estate boxes that are waterproof where you could put like a house listing um, but that isn't necessarily a call to action, just a piece that you bring home that continues to enforce our brand and that we're here and exist. So that's cool. So these, so these are temporary then. I mean, these are like, um, yeah, these aren't installed. These are like They're real estate not. sign types. We use yeah. real estate signs and then, um, we obviously keep the metal frames are reused each time, yeah. but we reprint and laminate. Uh, the activities so cool. and the pages of the book each time. Do you have like a stable of those now that you use and can just move around the city or is that how it works? Like, so you have a collection now of these, do you, do you like move different ones around the city? You're not creating like new ones, like, or, or are you, I don't know. <laughs> so the signs we move around, obviously. Yeah. Um, we have a pretty standard template that we used when we rolled out a new brand. So we are really just dropping the book pages in. So it doesn't take long from a design standpoint. Um, the production of it, you know, the printing, the laminating obviously does. We have yeah. a like comparably to at least local libraries in our area and I'm near Chicago, a pretty big team. So it hasn't been an issue. So we do new stories. We have not reused a single story. Wow, that is fantastic. That is really good. Um, that is so cool. So yeah, so you haven't, have you ever tried an incentive with those like other than like you said, like the coloring sheets or something, or, or is it just not even, you know, or how does it connect? How do you, how do you all feel that it connects to your library or how do you get feedback or what, it, what do you think? So for us, it was about building the partnerships and then we were focused on people who may not typically come into the library. Um, we are, um, we have a main library and a small branch, but we serve a rather large area. So putting our story walks in parks that are not by our South branch or our main library branch was really more about connecting with people who aren't necessarily in the building. That's cool. 
That's really neat. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. It's really great to have you here. And uh, thanks for coming on camera. Yes, awesome. Um, a reuse site. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Tara. I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe you want to <laughs> put these somewhere where other libraries can rent them. <laughs> Though I'm sure they're branded to your library. As you said, it's like a branded template. But it would be neat to see. Um, I, I ever pictures on your Facebook page of them or things like that? Or is, is there? There should be. Yes. Yeah. I'm actually fairly new in my position here. So oh, I've only okay. been here Great. about six months. So my previous Great. library, there are lots. But yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, that's really cool. Um, and uh, Brianna, you said you didn't do an official story walk, but you had a storefront storybook and a local theater group recorded a podcast dramatic reading to go with it. So, so it's a storefront. So just in it, it like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if you, oh, oh, Brianna had to leave. So we'll never know. Um, well, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah that's a cool idea yeah you certainly could do it in a storefront you could do it in store windows things like that but yeah the idea of getting it out into parks is pretty neat um so yeah well very cool um anything else anybody has uh that they're working on that they're looking forward to that uh anybody have any anybody have anything that's giving them any challenges now uh that uh that we can help with Check my other notes here. Something else in the book that he was talking about. Um, when people are finding, so I thought this was interesting. When people are finding different jobs uh, or when you're talking about different jobs for things to do, um, he talks about people will find a place that does the job that they're doing, and then they'll continue looking for places that uh, provide better and better solutions. And um, recently we're talking about um, the library and how, um, so as I was doing this, there's this presentation we do in our new employee orientation. I was helping somebody by um, doing it. And, and what it is, is why, how are libraries relevant in the 21st century? Why, you know, what, what is still relevant about libraries? And it seems like a lot of the stuff that people used to do is one thing that people still can do at the library, like DVDs. People can still get DVDs from the library. Um, that's where people come to. Um, so I don't know if the library is a place where, uh, you know, is it a place where people are finding it as a better or only available solution for something um you know and how can we capitalize on those jobs that people look for the library for like dvd rental because i know dvd rental according to the data um i think uh, you all may see it too but dvds still pretty popular people still renting a lot of dvds um which i don't know i didn't expect that before i came to libraries i didn't think people still um uh, borrow DVDs as much as they do, but, uh, but yeah, still pretty popular. So I don't know, just an interesting observation about people finding, um, you know, you're looking for a place that does the job that you're looking for. And then you keep on finding places that do that a little better. Um, uh, yeah, Erica, yeah, surprising the DVD circulation is still a thing. But man, I tell you, People, I mean, I, in the library where I am, in the main library, that's where I see most people browsing. I mean, it is, you know, in a, in a prominent place, but still, I mean, I am just always surprised to see a lot of people browsing DVDs and it's great. I think it's really cool. There's some neat stuff you can find there. So, um, uh, our library, uh, recently, yeah, like uh, there's a, a social media challenge for like our regional library association. And it was about the 
you know, what item has circulated the most in your collection and all like the top 10, they were all DVDs. Um, <laughs> and it really surprised us all. I mean, I was of the belief like, yeah, DVDs are basically, you know, like dying. Um, but all, all 10 of our top circulated items were DVD, even when we tried to not just look at this specific item, but yeah. you know, the title, it was still <laughs> the matrix was our number was, one. <laughs> that's um, what I was going to say. Anyone were, interested. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, what were some of the titles <laughs> that people were the matrix <laughs> and then Harry Potter's, um, oh, and then yeah. Thomas, the tank engine, um, <laughs> So it was a wide range of DVDs, but it was really interesting because we definitely don't promote our DVDs or really think that they need it to be promoted. But the fact that there's clearly still an interest, um, it was really interesting. It is interesting. I know. And you just think like, well, this is the thing that people are looking for. And, you know, it, yeah. And then there is that kind of paradox of, do we need, you know, well, people come here for DVDs. Do we need to? But if you think about, so, uh, you know, right now we're trying to get our library to, uh, over the next, well, now it's like seven years or eight years, um, 75% of the households in our area, in our service area, which is the Duval County, um, using or contributing to the library. And, you know, you think about some of these things that you're not sure, and then the things that people are doing and getting, you know, there could be, and I'm not saying that I want to, I want to necessarily shotgun advertise this out. I still would like to see if we can find ways to target this advertising to people that would be likely, but you know, all these kind of occasional users, like, is that something that they maybe don't realize that we still have DVDs and is, you know, maybe DVD advertising right now, it would be an interesting experiment to promote that kind of against the, um, you know, streaming because streaming is expensive and not everybody has, you know, disposable income to do streaming. And yes, they can stream things through the library, but do they have the bandwidth to do that? And I don't know if all of our services, you know, well, and I should know this, um, if they're all easy enough to put up on the TV, but you know, a DVD is made for connecting to the television. So it might be interesting to see some of that. Um, uh, Tara said, overheard someone at the hair salon being excited about getting audio books. So they didn't need their audio audible account. Um, yeah, I see Tara had to leave, but it's exactly um, the kind of thing that I, I think they're, you know, it, it it's neat if you can find people that would be good candidates and that they're looking for those kind of things and they're looking for those kind of solutions. And that's what they're looking to the library for. Um, because yeah, there is, you know, there is an opportunity to save people money and, um, you know, every service now has, I mean, I don't know, Audible's like, I think, $9, 10 a month. Um, I think most of the streaming services average something like $10, $12 a month, or maybe even a little more. Um, you know, so even if you're trying to cut the cord now, your bill can end up being, you know, your cable bill to get all the programs you need or programs you're looking for could still be high. So yeah, Erica, DVDs is one of the top search terms <laughs> across public library catalogs. Um, I know, yes, ALA should pay for Audible. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing that would be neat would be, um, I don't know. I, I always thought about would be, you know, advertise, uh, libraries buying advertising on podcasts, like the way that, you know, Squarespace and, um, you know, I mean, Square, Squarespace, they did most of their advertising through podcasts and they just did amazing, amazing results. Um, there was another, there were some other companies that did that too. Um, I can't remember. There was another early company that did like, that's one of their, that's like a marketing story is somebody that didn't do any other advertising. All they did was get on uh, podcast advertising and it just, uh, you know, that's all they ever needed. They didn't need anything else. Um, so yeah, well, very cool. Well, thank you all for uh, participating today. And we just got a few minutes left. Um, 
And uh, so next month we will be reading, um, what's it called? Oh, The Power of Habit, which I don't know if you've read it. Um, I love The Power of Habit. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's great. If you've read it, it's worth reading again. It's worth listening to. I love listening to it. Um, and uh, oh, value calculators. Yes, before, let's go back to this comment. I like this. Libraries have done a lot around value calculators. Don't get the sense they're super helpful. To So you're talking about, Erica, um, like the, uh, you know, every dollar in taxes is worth $10 in libraries. It, it, you know, you're getting back from your library tenfold or something. Yeah, I, I don't know if they speak to people. That yeah, way. I mean, I think they make library boards happy and they make us feel good. Those are nice things. I'm not, I'm mm. not, I'm not saying the value calculators don't have any weight, but I don't get the impression that they're actually like increasing awareness of what the library offers or bringing in new people or deepening engagement with current customers. I think what I've thought was the people that probably that makes the most sense to are like the lawmakers. Like if you need to talk to your city council, if you need to talk to somebody, talk to them about, you know, hey, you know, your constituents are getting $10 for every dollar they spend in taxes at the library. So, you know, make sure they know how much value they're getting out of the library or how much value they're wasting by not using the library. So, yeah. No, that's a good cool. point. You know, yeah. I think that probably, yeah. That probably yeah. is smart, but then that's, those are the people that we should talk to that about, like. Right, and that's the thing, yeah, talking to the people who, what's their job that they're trying to get out of the library done is they're trying to get more votes. <laughs> so how can they tell their voters? Um, so yeah, Power of Habit is next month. Um, and um, we, uh, yeah, so really looking forward to reading that. Again, if you haven't read it, it's great. If you've read it, I, I it's, it's, one that I I feel like you can read again and again. It's it's always got some really good stuff in it. Um, and uh, yeah, so before we go, thank you all for hanging on till the end. Um, Kirsten, I think you won the book last time, if I remember correctly. Yes. Okay. So Kirsten, pick a number between one and five, and uh, we'll see who wins this week. Five. So five is Kelly O'Moore. Kelly, you win a copy of Power of Habit. So, um, so I will chat with you on uh, Facebook and get your information on how you like to get it. And then we'll get that copy to you. Um, thanks again, everybody. I'll be sending out a uh, feedback survey. I'd love to hear your feedback about this. Um, <laughs> this uh this meeting today i really really appreciate you taking the time to do this and hope that it was valuable i really enjoy it i love talking with you all the time and uh, uh look forward to seeing you on facebook look forward to seeing you in email and if you ever have any questions or anything um that you need please let me know thanks so much thank Talk you. To you all soon bye